Hi everyone and welcome to another FHS podcast with me today is possibly the most energetic and cheerful president and managing director of Nuwu at Wyndham Hotels and Resorts, the one and only Dimitris. Dimitris, thank you for coming on board today. Good morning, good morning. I need to, uh, you know what, I need to keep up to your, uh, to your intro, so I'm going to keep on smiling throughout the podcast. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dimitri, you know, the moment they told me it's Wyndham today, I went back in time 12 years ago, and I remember a resort in uh, Orlando, Florida that I visited. Until this day, I remember, and trust me, I don't remember what I ate yesterday. Um, so I felt there was definitely a unique competitive advantage to, to Wyndham. And I wanted to ask you today, what do you think is that competitive advantage to Wyndham that you would like to bring to the Middle East? Oh, wow. I, I, look, I, I'm going to say something which is, is going to sound a bit controversial. I think it's, it's people. Uh, and and, and, and I, stand, I stand with a lot of um, very humble in front of all the great people that all our you know, comrades in this industry have. But I think... One of one of our strain, uh, one of our strongest assets is our people. Uh, you know, brands, companies, uh, they are. I mean, they're they're great, but there would be nothing without their people. So we we've got a great team. We've got a great a team with tenure. We've got a team that lives and breathes hospitality, and um, they love window. And, and all of that together, it actually creates a, a great strategic advantage for us. And then I wouldn't even call it a strategic advantage. I would call it. Um, something that complements what we offer to the Middle East and, and complements complements a lot of, of our presence in the region. So our people, uh, our brands, uh, the fact that we we actually have a, a business model that reflects what is actually happening now in the Middle East with uh, with franchise being being one of the leading um, segments in the industry. So you put all this together, it gives us it gives us you know a lot of possibilities about the future and a lot of positive energy. You spoke about positive energy. Is is that what we saw? We were not so everybody that we've got that positive energy to make things happen for our owners and our partners. I love that Dimitris actually hospitality at the end of the day it's a piece of people business. Um, I know you've been curiously optimistic about the plans uh, of wisdom of Wyndham in the region, which I believe, to be honest, is a logical approach. But with your consistency, what brands have you opened in the Middle East and why have you chosen them specifically for this market? Look, we we obviously were um, um, it's the usual suspect. Ramanda has been a very successful brand for us out of the 550. Uh, that we've got across the EMEA region. Uh, half of them are Ramada. So Ramada is a very successful brand. People love Ramada in uh, in the Middle East because of you know its clear definition and what it does what it does at the end of the day for the guest and the owner. Uh, I'm very excited about Wyndham Garden. Uh, Wyndham Garden is a is a new brand that we've introduced to the Middle East. And again, it, it it's a very clearly defined in terms of what it what it offers to the guests and the owners and uh, i'm gonna be uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna say something that i've said so many times i'm extremely excited about vienna house um we want to bring vienna house to the middle east uh, i'm actually at the conference uh, this this coming weekend and week in in riyadh and, and, and we're going to be talking about vienna house quite a lot we purchased that brand about six months ago and it has that element and essence of European hospitality and I'm sure that Vienna House you know owners and guests are gonna love it they're gonna they're gonna love what the brand has to offer so I'm really excited to talk to everybody next week about what Vienna House can actually do for them as I said both the guests and the owners in the Middle East so uh, but again uh, we, we it's it's not you know what Dana it's not about the brands at the end it, you know brands can only be like a sign on the wall or 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 you know just a name it it's about you know the right the right time the right owner the right location and the right country so we just we just don't bring brands just for the sake of bringing brands we actually do it because we believe it actually fits with the market so we have to be selective we have to be careful uh, to who to who we introduce one brand but at the end of the day, the day as as you said we said at the beginning it's about the people so people make the brands so we're selective. We are very careful in the brands that we bring in the Middle East, and we are very excited about introducing the Adams. That's amazing. I was going to ask you, is innovation going to overtake people? Uh, but I think it's a definite no for you in this uh, in this conversation today. You definitely highlighted the people aspect of the hospitality industry, which I'm no. amazed at. 
Yeah, look, innovation will complement innovation will complement people. You know, I, I I see a lot of innovation happening to hotels, but at the end of the day, it's the people element and what the guests are looking for that makes the difference. So yes, innovation will happen and it's inevitable and it's amazing to see the innovation coming to our industry. But at the end of the day, it's the people element that are gonna that's gonna be the essence of hospitality around the world. I couldn't agree more, and uh, I'd be more than happy to say that's pro possibly one of the, the best answers given to a question like this uh, that's been asked. There's one last question that I am very keen to ask you, Dimitris, from working in your father's business long time ago to where you are today. You've always been the brightest smile in the room. What gives you the ability to stay this positive? What's your secret? I'd love to share it before FHS. No, I, I, I'll tell you what. I wake up in the morning and I have two choices. Uh, I, I either um, put a put a very big smile on my face and be optimistic, or, or or be extremely miserable and and make everybody around me miserable, equally miserable. You know, I don't want I don't want it to sound like a, like a guy who goes around you know with a big smile. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of anxiety, personal and and business wise. But you know what? I don't. I don't think it's going to make anybody um, happier or anybody change their attitude if I'm going around being miserable and and looking like like somebody that you know he doesn't believe that there's no there's no tomorrow. Um, you know what? In, in in hospitality, we all we're all actors. Every day we have to we have to make sure that that we we get on on stage and and we put our best behavior and our best smiles and and we make we try to make people around us um, you know. Happy. I think misery is contagious, uh, but equally, you know, being positive and optimistic is far more positive and far more contagious. And that's what I've decided to do with my life. Amazing, Dimitris. We are very excited to have you at FHS. And please keep spreading your positive energy everywhere. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Future Hospitality Summit podcast. For more information, visit www.futurehospitalitysummit.com.